Hi, I'm Danny Johnson. So glad that you're joining uh, me today, whether you are uh, listening to the podcast, watching this on uh, television, YouTube, or on um, Facebook, um, whichever way it is that you are gathering this content today, I just hope it is a huge blessing to you. Welcome to this little corner inside of our house. Um, it's actually in our room, in our bedroom. Uh, this is a place that I like to sit, especially on Saturdays. Um, I have this really kind of fun, funky chase lounge that I'm sitting on um, and just like staring out that window. I know you can see a little bit of the view, not, not the view, but just trees that are right back here, but it's just a stunning view that is out here. And so every Saturday, uh, which is a day of rest for me, is as a time to just like re-devour um, and, and try to hear and reevaluate and, and, and to have some stillness kind of inside of my soul, uh, which is desperately needed. Um, so if this is your very first time uh, joining us on this particular show, um, we really like to focus on um, various different things that are going on inside of your life um, and my life. And uh, we like to come from a spiritual perspective because when your spiritual life is dry and it's a mess, everything else seems to be kind of messy and dry. And which is why I spend a considerable amount of time um, every day actually um, making sure that I'm feeding myself spiritually because... Uh, you know, we all encounter things throughout the day that can be, uh, well, give us an opportunity to not be our best selves, right? We got plenty of opportunities every single day to, to screw up really, really badly. And I find that if I'm not spiritually fed, the screw ups are like beyond bad. They're like beyond bad. So I, I don't know if you've been uh, connecting with us every single week um, or not, uh, or uh, several times a week, but we do have lots of content available at dannyjohnson.com um, and via our podcast as well, as well as on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and YouTube. There's just hours and hours of, of content that's, that's sitting there available for you. Um, I left off on the last time that, uh, that we had this kind of one-on-one -on -one time together in this corner of our house, um, which is kind of a very spiritual um, corner of, um, of this space. And uh, I want you to turn to Philippians chapter four. I left off last time um, with verse six because uh, it was so crazy meaty. And I was telling you about a story of being on the Drake Passage and uh, which is heading down to, actually we're heading back from Antarctica on a, on a boat that only had 100 passengers on it and 75 crew. And uh, the Drake Passage is really unforgiving. Like it's just crazy. A piano completely flipped over uh, 15, about 15 chairs with people in them during dinner that are chained to the ground, fl people flipping over in them. That's how wild and crazy the Drake Passage is. And I met a, very, a lot of different people that were on the boat and that were from the Philippines. And um, it really uh, took me. Um, you know, that, that they're so grateful to have a job because where they're from, there's not enough jobs. And and uh, this one man, his name is Ishmael, he uh, said he was grateful to just have the job and that this is this was the only contract that was available nine months that he's going to be gone from his family and he has a wife and a son and this is his way of providing for them. Uh, and that there's no, no work for him in the Philippines, which is like so terrible. I mean, what an what a awful, awful thing. Uh, meaning that he has to put his body through this kind of pain and torment, um, you know, having to work at, while you really just rather throw up because it's so bad. So I found myself um, in, in the last time you and I talked, I talked, um, um, yeah, uh, for the Danny Johnson show anyway, um, that uh, is a television show. Um, I found myself uh, guilty, if you will, of, um, no, just straight up guilty. I found myself guilty of spending too much time focused on things that were not healthy, that were not good, that were not uh, having my mind where it shouldn't be. And so if you miss that message, you need to go and find the, that message because uh, you need to hear the first part of this. So I'm going to get into this uh, second part of this um, that I feel is going to be really helpful and beneficial for you for this next season of your life, uh, this season of winning, because this is your time to win. It is your time to win. And and um, that the time to win is when you choose that it is your time to win. You know, sometimes we have to come to the end of ourselves. Um, and we have to come to the end of our complaining. We have to come to the end of our frustrations. We have to come to the end of being anxious. And, and we, we come to the end of it when we say enough is enough. I'm just not going there anymore. And that's when you become more disciplined. And, and the scriptures actually show us, um, you know, which is what I talked about 
uh, last week, um, which was be anxious for nothing, but at all times by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, make your, no make your requests known to God. And so we got really deep into the, that kind of a conversation. Go back and listen to that message. But now we're going to start at verse 7. And it says this, because, hold on. Have you, have you been in that place where you've allowed your mind to wander into things that it is just not good? Have you been in that place where you have allowed your mouth to speak about things that are just not good? Have you allowed even your physical body to go and do things or to be in places that you know are just not good? They're just not healthy for you. They're just not becoming for you. And have you allowed your freedom, let's say, have you allowed your freedom um, to take you into places that are just not healthy, that are just not good, that the fruit is telling you that this was not a good idea? Right, and what do I mean by the fruit? The fruit that's coming out of you. Um, whether the fruit that's coming out of you, and, and mind you, I'm talking about myself with you, okay? And this is what brought me to this place while I was a, on in the Drake Passage on a boat um, on our 25th wedding anniversary celebration, the last leg of our celebration um, for celebrating 25 years being married um, and having an amazing and phenomenal marriage. Man, the last four years have been dreamy, like so dreamy. Um, we, we had some things we had to learn. Um, and if you are heading to the next first steps to success, you're going to learn those things um, and how to succeed and go from a wild, like, wow, earthquakey marriage, uh, tsunami marriage, uh, hurricane marriage. Uh, if you want to go from that to a beautiful, hot marriage um, that's so blessed um, and, and has so much great peace and still challenges and, and still crazy things that happen just because we're human beings and we live in this world uh, and we have this thing called life, but winning through those challenges, winning through the, no matter what the circumstances are, it's really a beautiful thing. So if you've been in that place where you've kind of allowed your head to go to places that it shouldn't and, and then your mouth to say things that you know you shouldn't, and again, it's all based on the fruit, it's based on the fruit, what do I mean by that? Just the fruit, you know, the fruit isn't good. It's either bitter, the fruit is um, uh, tasteless, the fruit can be, come on, have you ever had fruit that didn't taste like anything? Yeah. Have you ever had a tomato that doesn't taste like a tomato? You probably are having one right now, and if you're going to Israel, then you will see what I'm talking about, like a real tomato. Israel has real tomatoes. Um, better than any organic tomato I've ever had here, any tomatoes I've even grown here in the U.S., so if you, um, so it first starts with your thoughts, right? And then, then out comes your mouth, your, your thoughts that you've been dwelling on. Um, you know, now you give birth to them when they, the thought comes out of your mouth. And it could be in the form of, uh, you know, bitter, that it might be bitter fruit that you're speaking. It might be tasteless that you're speaking. Um, it might be hateful fruit that you might be seeing. It might be jealous fruit that you might be seeing. It might be um, apathetic fruit. It's just like, meh, meh, it's okay. Um, it might be uh, anxious, leaving you empty, leaving you wanting, unsatisfied, unfulfilled, right? Have you ever, do you have fruit like that in your life? Well, I did. <laughs> I did. And I'm, I'm, I'm so grateful for this community and I'm so grateful for what we get to do together because um, in, in my work, I have to continuously evaluate myself and see where I'm at mentally, emotionally, physically. And, and this experience that I had on that boat, I had a lot of time to journal, a lot of time to think. And, and it'd be super easy, you know, if I, if I didn't have the career that I have and if I, I didn't have the commitment that I have to my God, it'd be like so easy to go, who cares? Who cares? That's why I'm so grateful for you. Like, so grateful for you in my life. The sun is starting to come down and, and <laughs> not come down, but I mean, it's moving past the awning here. So verse 7, uh, chapter 4 of Philippians. So again, it's Philippians chapter 4, verse 7. It says, and the peace of Elohim, which surpasses all knowledge, will keep your hearts and your minds through Yeshua the Mashiach. Finally, my brothers, what things are true, and what things are honest, and what things are just, 
and what things are pure and what things are beautiful and what things are honorable in reporting and deeds of praise and virtuousness on these your thoughts should focus. You see, while I was on the Drake Passage, I happened to have been reading this. I read this a lot, sometimes 18, 25 pages a day. Whew. Come on, I'm gonna say this again because I really want you uh, to get this. I really, really want you to gain understanding of this. Let's just start with eight, go to eight. And finally, my brothers, what things are true. By the way, you're like, wait a second, this, familiar, this passage doesn't sound familiar. Well, if you're brand new to the faith and you're brand, here, brand new here to dannyjohnson.com, this book is the one I'm reading from. It's awesome. It's the Aramaic to English translation. It is so precious and wonderful and beautiful. Uh, it is, uh, the, the Second Testament was um, first translated in this, an Aramaic, um, and... Uh, than to, to Greek than to English. And so I'd much rather get closer to the original text than, because things get lost in translation and then you're talking about the Aramaic, it's very close to Hebrew, very, very close to Hebrew. It's just a different dialect of Hebrew. They use all the same Hebrew um, letters in Hebrew alphabet. So this is closest to the original language that was written, okay? Um, other translations do not say this. They just don't say this. They don't bring it to the, to the level of um, understanding that this does. So let's do it again. Finally, my brothers. By the way, you can get this at Amazon.com. Amazon.com. That's where I got mine. Finally, my brothers, what things are true and what things are honest and what things are just and what things are pure what things are beautiful, what things are honorable in reporting, and deeds of praise and virtuousness. On these, your thoughts should focus. Wow. Come on. Don't we focus on what's unjust? Don't we largely focus on what is untrue? Don't we largely focus on who's lying? Don't we often focus on what is impure? Don't we largely focus on that which is ugly? Don't we often focus on what is dishonorable? And we give praise to those things? You're like, what are you talking about, Danny? Yeah, we give praise to those things. Why? By talking about them dwelling on them, focusing on them. That's how we praise it. Because we're giving it so much time and attention. Because we're giving it so much oxygen. Oxygen, that's what, that's what we're giving it. We're giving the wrong thing oxygen. And, and so we end up focusing on a lie and what is not true and, and what is ugly. And, and we, we tend to give praise to what is unjust instead of what is just instead of doing what is just, instead of, of, of focusing on, again, look at this. I mean, this, this is just like so crazy to me when I think about it, because we do, I did. Like when I, when I came across this passage on the Drake Passage, how funny, this passage on the Drake Passage. When I came across this passage on the Drake Passage, I literally was in that place of, you know, rehearsing and nursing and, and, and like giving so much time and attention and focus on, on something that was not praiseworthy. But I was giving praise to it because I was giving focus to it. And I was giving time and attention and oxygen to it instead of what is just. Come on, most of us have a tendency of focusing on what is unjust. We like to complain about the lack of justice in what? Pff, give the list. The lack of justice that is happening in the world today, right? The lack of, the lack of what? The lack of truth. So we like to focus on, well, that's not the truth. So we have a tendency of, of giving too much oxygen and fighting about what's not true instead of doing what this passage says, which is what? So powerful. What things are true? Focus on what's true. Focus on what's honest. Focus on what is just. 
Focus on what is pure. Focus on what is beautiful. And I happen to have just been in, in our, uh, Antarctica, which is stunning, stunning. The beauty of God is in that place. Oh my gosh, and it's overwhelming. Absolutely overwhelming, okay? Focus on what is virtuous. Focus on deeds that are praiseworthy versus focusing on deeds that are not praiseworthy and we give praise to the deeds that are not praiseworthy, right? Look, we like to focus on the injustice of the unborn children that are being aborted to the tune of 3,800 every day, right? We focus on that injustice. We focus on the people who believe that that should be done. Instead of what? Focusing on what is just. You can change your mind in a moment. And if you can change your mind in a moment, it automatically changes your mouth. And when you change your mouth, you change your circumstances that are around you. When you change your, your circumstances that are around you, now you change the impact you have on those that are around you. Now your influence is worthy to be followed. But when you are like most people, and like I had been from time to time, and especially what took me to being homeless, how I ended up homeless is because I focused on what was unjust. I focused on being robbed. I focused on the fact that I was raped. I focused on the fact that I was molested. I focused on the fact that I had been abused as a child. I had focused on the fact that I had been abandoned. I had focused on the fact that I had been uh, uh, embezzled, not once, but twice, but three times, right? So, so do you understand what I'm saying? Like when you focus on those things, you create circumstances in your life that are horrific, but when you do and you live out this passage and you do what he says and he's trying to tell us exactly what we should be focusing on because he desires for us to have a good life. And by the way, he has a good life for us already. It's already all around us. It's all in how we perceive it. It's all in how we perceive it. So many people, in fact, I would say safe to say that it's probably 98% of the population because we look at the fruit of 98 percenters who end up dead or dead broke at the age of 65, depending on their family, friends, and federal government for their main source of income. And how do they end up there? How do they end up with this, this life that is, like, that is destined for mediocrity, is destined for less than what God has for them? I mean, do you really think that he put you on the earth because he wants you to just be everyday average Joe? No, I don't believe that for five seconds. I don't believe that for five seconds, right? And so here's the facts. I want you to test yourself right now. I want you to test yourself right now. I want you to, to have a little bit of an evaluation, a self-evaluation, and I want you to, to kind of just think and ponder and ask God, ask him by way of his Holy Spirit and just say, God, have I missed it? Have I been like totally focused on the injustice that I feel has happened inside my company? Have I focused on the lies that somebody told about me? Am I focused on the dishonesty that I see that is happening you know, in politics? Have I been focusing? I want you to look at and I want you to give yourself a gauge on a scale of, you know, give yourself a percentage, you know, of 100% of the time. Is it 90% of the time you focus on it? Is it 50% of the time? Come up with a gauge. And, and I'm, I, you know, if you can't come up with one, just use the one I just gave you. It's like, okay, how much a percentage of my thinking time have I been focused on what is unjust, what is dishonest, what is not true, uh, what, it, what, uh, what, how much time... Have I been giving praise to the things I don't want in my life because I'm talking about them, because I'm focused on them, because I'm dwelling on them, because I'm telling everybody else about them, right? Ugh. Ah, what a challenging message. So powerful. So, so powerful. Let me pray for you. Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for my brother. Thank you for my sister. Thank you for this amazing community, Father, that you have blessed us with. And thank you, Father, for how you have gathered us right here um, on this, uh, uh, on these programs that are being produced each week and, and the podcast that is coming out several times a week and this daily television um, uh, show that is coming out on a weekly basis. Thank you, Father, for how you've gathered all of us from all over the world. 
Thank you, Father, for everyone we are connecting with on, on all the social media places. And thank you, Father, for the breakthrough that you're bringing this year for so many people, that this is a cornerstone year, that this is a year where people will look back and go, oh my gosh, everything changed this year, and it's never, ever going to be the same. Um, Father, thank you for this message. You have given us the path on how to have such a blessed life. You have given us the path on how to be prosperous and how to walk in good health and how to have a harmonious marriage. And it all starts with what we are choosing to focus on. So I praise you for giving us the way out of depression, giving us the way out of frustration, giving us a way out of anxiety, giving us a way out of everything that perturbs us. And you've picked us for freedom. You've called us to be free and you've given us instructions on how to be free. Father, I bless my brother and sister right now who are listening and watching. I bless them, Father. I bless their goals for this year. I bless their health. I bless their finances. I bless their reputation. I bless their mind. I bless their mouth, their ears, their eyes, their heart, their soul. I bless every part of their life and everything that they touch, that this will truly be the year that they testify that there's no one like you, that there's no one like you, that there's no one like you, and they testify of the great things you have done and moved inside of their life. We ask these things in the name of Yeshua, HaMashiach, that is Jesus the Messiah, amen. Friend, I need to see you at First Steps to Success. Get over to the website, dannyjohnson.com right now. This is supposed to be the greatest year of your life, and we have got a proven system. We have collected tens of thousands of testimonials, testimonials like, like, Stuart, who could not feed his eight children. He had to have his parents supplement his income and he's an engineer and he was a pastor's son. You know, he grew up and never did anything wrong. He was a good man, a good husband, and he worked so hard to get his degree and yet his degree in engineering did not help him to provide for his family. And Stuart Lynn was crying out to God one day saying, God, please help me. I do not want another year like this. I do not want another year where I cannot provide for my family. And it wasn't because he was lazy, he was hard working, he did everything right and now he was mad. He did everything that society told him, everything that church told him and none of it resulted in him just being able to get ahead. Actually, even to just break even. So what did he do? So he just prayed. He's like, God, you have to show me, you gotta make a way. He gets on the internet and he starts to Google trainers. For some reason, he lands at dannyjohnson.com. Crazy, right? He goes over to dannyjohnson.com. He finds out that there's an event taking place. He had no money to get to that event. He pulls out his credit card. He finances the ticket to get into the event. Then he finances a plane ticket and he finances the, uh, the hotel stay. He finances his food for that weekend. And his beautiful, precious wife blessed him when he told her that he needed to go to this. He came back a changed man and he registered for that next event and the next one and the next one and the next one. He continued to come back and he continued to get his whole mind and his whole body and his whole soul completely retrained. And he applied everything that he was learning and right away moved his income far up and then within a couple of years, started his own engineering firm. That today he has made millions of dollars and he is taking care of the poor. Friend, he is building houses for the poor. He is freeing sex slaves out of the sex trade. He's putting in water wells, using his business. He now has five companies, employs his family members, building wealth and generational legacy. He's no longer the less than average guy. He's no longer the, the mediocre guy. He is a guy who now has influence and has influenced thousands and tens of thousands of people. Um, he has inspired so many people. And so I believe that you're the next Stuart Lynn. I think you're the next Stuart and Lisa Lynn. I think that it is your time to prosper. I think, it, and it's not, I'm not saying this as some preacher out there that's like just giving you some hype message. No, I'm gonna show you how. Like the how-tos, the same how-tos that, that Stuart learned at First Steps to Success on how to prosper in his job, the kind of conversations to have with his boss, the kind of things he should focus on that would make him more valuable at work and right away changed his income, right? And to then, and helping his boss to prosper and then starting his own company. He learned 
the skill sets to do that. So don't look at me like some preacher of some Bible that is looking to get rich off of you. I don't even draw a salary from First Steps to Success or the business that produces it. In fact, when you register for First Steps, you're actually feeding orphans, literally. You will actually feed eight orphans for an entire month by registering for First Steps to Success right now. That's what you will do. And so it's not making me money. I'm not somebody that's gonna say, I'm gonna pass the plate and take some money from you. No, I'm gonna show you how to pay off your debt step by step. All in the same three days, you're gonna learn how to prosper in your job. And again, not this hype crap. I'm telling you, you're gonna learn step one, step two, step three, step four. You're gonna learn scripts that are gonna make you more valuable at work. If you have a business, you're gonna learn scripts that are gonna get you more customers, get you more business. You're gonna, you're, if you bring your whole staff with you, they're gonna learn how to get more customers for you. They're gonna learn how to close better deals. They're gonna learn how to close bigger deals by you and them being at first step set, which is why, by the way, Stuart Lim brings his entire staff through first steps to success in creating a dynasty. It's an ongoing training system that will train you to reign, not only in the kingdom of heaven, but you will bring the kingdom of heaven right here on earth with you. I'm so sick and tired of so much spiritual teaching out there that does nothing but hype you up and no one shows you the secrets. No one shows you exactly what should I say? How should I do it? What do I say to my spouse? What do I say to my kids? How do I fix these problems? Give me the steps to pay off my debt. How do I start to accumulate wealth? <laughs> Friend, you've already given that tithe. You've already like, you know, prayed and asked. Now it's time to learn. Now it's time to learn, which is a biblical thing. All right. So go to dannyjohnson.com right now. Get registered right now. No more excuses. This is your season to win. All you're missing is the playbook to win. That's all you're missing. You're missing the strategies. You're missing the methods. You're missing the training that has worked for tens of thousands of people from all over the globe. So if you're on the other side of the globe, get your plane ticket now. Get to First Step Success now. Do not delay. Quit putting your future on hold. Quit losing money because of what you don't know how to do. This is your time. God bless you and I'll talk to you next week. Bye.